with another video. I'm trying my hardest to stay consistent, but this was pretty requested when I asked you guys a while ago what kind of videos you wanted. A lot of people said like tips and tricks, like how to become TikTok famous. So that's pretty much what this is. Just the beginning is going to be just tips on how to grow your account and how you can get on the For You page more. And then the second part is just going to be a couple tricks that I've learned about more makeup stuff. Like a lot of people are interested in, I'll show you a picture, this scar burn look I do. And then also how I cry all the time on TikToks. So I mean, those are going to be at the end. The beginning is just going to be like the tips and stuff for you guys. So just going to jump right into it. So the number one tip I'd say be the most important is to be consistent. You have to post multiple times a day. If you don't post for long periods of times, so your account will become dead and it won't be able to get on the For You page as much. So you need to make sure you're posting consistently. But also, if your videos don't do as well, you can delete them, but leave them up for a while. Like, leave the post up. But also, if your video just does absolutely awful, definitely delete it because it can also hurt you from getting on the For You page. Your lighting and camera is probably, I don't know, it's kind of tied with the first one. You need to make sure you have really good lighting. On the For You page, you're not going to see that many videos, unless they're really good videos, where it's really dark, you can't really see the person's face. Most of the time, the For You page wants your face clear, in full frame, just where you can actually see the person. It doesn't need to be a big, expensive ring light. I don't even have a ring light. This is what I use. I use this big, tall lamp, and it's got this just light, this bendy light, and it works. The only problem with using the lamp and everything is the lighting isn't very consistent like my lighting from now because I moved it is now going to look a little bit I can't fix it this is what happens you have to make sure you put it in the right spot I don't think the lighting is right anymore it's okay but that's the only downfall I need a ring light I just don't really know which one is the best one to get and your camera quality really also needs to be just as good as your lighting you need both it sounds bad but you like crappy phones aren't really gonna do too well. They're, I'm not just saying iPhone, you need an iPhone, you need an iPhone. There's good camera quality on Androids, but not all of them do. Also, some of the older iPhone models have really bad camera quality as well. It just, it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have, it just the camera quality needs to be good. If you can't afford, like your parents can't afford an iPhone payment and everything, you can usually buy a used one pretty cheap and it doesn't even need to be your phone. Like I understand people, like plans are hard to get on like minutes and stuff on iPhones. Just have a backup iPhone or something. And iPads look not so good either. That's another one. Even if it's the newest iPad, the quality is not usually as good. The next tip is do not dance. Do not dance unless you take dance lessons, like you're just an exceptional dancer. Doing TikTok dances is not gonna work. It just does not work that way. To, you can dance eventually, but just being a normal person and just TikTok dancing, I don't think you're gonna get very far and trying to create your dances, it's just gonna waste time. I suggest going in with something else, like just following some of the trends, going in through comedy or through POVs. And if you want a TikTok dance, do both. Don't just dance and expect everything to happen. Try and do different things and dance on the side. That leads me to the next thing, variety. Try multiple things. Don't just straight do POVs because POVs might not be your thing. Maybe comedy is your thing. Don't do just dancing because maybe makeup stuff is your thing. Or like aesthetic videos. Try all the different stuff. I didn't start with POVs. Literally, I had been doing like comedy things, just following the trends. I was getting nowhere. I had 4,000 followers. I was just coasting by, just having fun. And then I posted my first POV and I hit 10K the next day. And then from then on, I just did POV, POV. I didn't know I was gonna POVs, but POVs is just what worked for me. So by adding in the variety of the POV, it really worked for me and here I am today. So definitely don't stick to one topic, don't stick to one category, try different things. Definitely try the trends out, but also try to make your own trends. Try and strike something, do something new, and just try and start something. That's really what's gonna help you a lot. Think of all the people who started the trends. Their video influenced all these different people. All these people saw their video, Starting the trends will help you a lot if you can think of them, but also follow some of the trends because maybe you're, you don't have the best idea of trends. Also, the big, a big, big, big tip is to twist trends. If everyone's doing it in like a happy way, make it a sad way, like shock somebody. If everyone's doing sad things, make it something funny to kind of lift the mood of the trend. Definitely twist, twist, twist trends. 
when I had 4,000, how I got those 4,000, I kept twisting the trends. And I mean, it didn't take me that far, but I would get, I have a couple of videos if you look back that have 200,000, 100,000, 50,000 views. And so even though I was small, I was still gaining those big view numbers because I was twisting some of the trends. Another thing with trends is to try and catch them early. If you see someone who started the trend, jump on that trend, jump on the trend to that sound, especially if it's a smaller sound, because a lot of people are going to see their video, go to the sound, also use small sounds actually. And they're going to look at the sound and yours is right there. Obviously, they're going to watch yours too. Literally, my first video, I caught a trend early. I didn't, didn't do that well. I mean, 50,000 views is pretty good. It was my first ever video. And it did pretty well because I caught a trend early and recreated it. And it honestly helps a lot. Hashtags. Hashtags aren't going to do anything. I haven't put a hashtag on my video in months. Hashtags don't do a single thing at all, honestly. Unless you want to catch like what TikTok has on the TikTok trending tags, those can help you. But other than that, tagging for you page, tagging style, tagging trend is not going to do anything for you. The time you post. Honestly, don't listen to that chart. I know that you guys know the chart. You know, you know the chart. The chart does not work. It doesn't do anything for you guys, I promise. If you have a pro account, I think you have to have a pro account. You can look at your analytics, but honestly, analytics don't do anything really for me. It says I'm highest at like 4 or 3 p.m. And I always post at night and they still do very well. Also, I try and post my creepy POVs, like the scariest, darkest ones, late at night because people are watching it at night and it just hits better. So try and time your stuff. If you have happy stuff earlier in the day, if you have scary or sad things, sad things really help at night. Definitely scary and sad at night, happy, funny in the morning. Also funny maybe at night if people are like really tired, they have, you know, that you get really giggly at night. So maybe that might be, but probably more in the morning, but definitely time your things that way. I don't really think there's a best time to post. Your age. This one is going to be a little difficult. Your age really does matter. The top 10 most followed people. Here's the list. None of them are young. I mean, yes, young, like Charlie's 16. Yes, they're young, but they're all like teenagers, older teenagers, adults. So if you're like 10 years old, nine years old, you can you can definitely do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's gonna be harder. You guys are gonna have to work harder, work harder. It's gonna be so much harder if you're younger. If you're a teenager, it's gonna be a little bit easier. Older adult, maybe a little bit harder as well. Age does play a part, but I think you guys can do it just with more work and more dedication. This is also, actually, I think this might be number one. I keep saying that, but only post things you are definitely proud of. Just don't post just a post. Only things you are genuinely proud of and you genuinely think will do good. I see people post things all the time just to post. If you don't think this is worth 10,000 likes, don't post it. It's not worth it. Don't even post it. But also, oftentimes, I'm like, I don't think this is that good, but it's good to other people. So it's good to have a second opinion. Ask someone in your family to watch this. What do you think of this? Be honest with me. Make sure it's someone who will give you good criticism and not someone that will just be like, yeah, that's good, honey. Definitely only post things you are proud of and you are confident that will do well. Don't give up. This is a big one too. <laughs> All of them are big ones, but don't give up. I was trying to get TikTok famous for so long, like six months. I started in June. My first POV was January 22nd. From June to January, I only had 4,000 followers. Since that, my first POV, I had 10,000 and just started running. Definitely, definitely, definitely takes patience and don't just give up. Keep pushing and pushing. If I would have just given up, I would not be here today. So next is the more like POV specific tricks. It's just like my burn thing I do and crying. Those are the last two. So if you don't, if you're not interested in that, just skip past it. But also I'm just gonna say, I don't know if these things are safe to do. I do them, nothing is bad ever, nothing bad has ever happened to me. But I mean, you could have a reaction to this. So I say, use at your own risk. Just be careful. So for crying, I usually start with a little bit of red, just any brush and putting it, I'm sorry, I have to look at myself and not the camera, putting it on your waterline just a little bit. Sorry, it gets in my eye a little bit. It doesn't bother me, but it might bother you. Just a little bit. I don't know what this does, but I think it just looks better in the end. 
that's good. They also take some non-waterproof eyeliner. This one is, I don't know, I've just had this for forever. It's more of like a felt tip, I guess is what that's called. It's kind of out, running out, I need to get another one. But I recommend using a liquid one instead of like a, I don't know what those are called, like a, you know, it looks like a pencil. Yeah, a pen, it's literally called a pencil, isn't it? It's a pencil. I recommend using a liquid one instead, but I just bulk it up. I kind of press on this one so it kind of bleeds a little bit. Oh, that's not good for my eye, but it's okay. It's hard to do this on camera. So you have a nice mirror there. Yeah, that's probably good. So do that on like close, as close to your bottom eyelashes as you can. So I, again, I'm looking at myself so I can actually see the look. And then the last part, which is what's definitely not safe. I just take, this is a cheap makeup brush because it irritates my eye more. In a cup of just regular water. A lot of people do saline stuff like eye contact solution, but I feel like irritating my eye with things that aren't supposed to be in my eye. This is definitely not safe. For things, <laughs> irritating my eye with things that aren't supposed to be in my eye helps it to look more natural. It helps like actual eye to look more red. <laughs> this is definitely not safe. I don't recommend doing this. I make sure it's like clean, you know, from the top, but yep, just dip it in there and kind of brush under your eye but on your eye see it like irritates your eye and it makes it also fill with tears but keep doing that and also touch these spots and look they start running try to blend it in may have put too much oh shoot i definitely put too much you can direct where they go and sort of make yep marks And that's just what works best. So wipe the end of that off, smear it, and add more water. And right before I film, I add a lot of water. And so they're actively coming down. But that's what I do for crying. It's definitely not safe, but it's whatever. This, I'm just gonna kind of do this so I can do the scar over here. So next is the big scar I do. I'll do one here and one over here just to show you better. All you need for this is eyeshadow, flour, and water. Also, don't know if this is safe, but I assume it's safe because it's just flour, water, eyeshadow on your face. I think that's okay for your skin. I don't have any exact measurements, but the flour and water just needs to be about this texture. Can you see it? It's literally flour and water. It's probably maybe a little more liquid than pizza dough. But yeah, you just take this and your hands are gonna get a little dirty. Take it and kind of smear it around. Kind of blend it out. Make it clumpy in some places and less clumpy in others. So this is probably not gonna look as good because I'm focused on the YouTube video and all this. Okay, clump it. that's kind of good sorry my ears are really big um but i'm putting them so it doesn't get in my hair so if this looks okay i think this is good you can kind of see i still have so much left you don't really need to make that much but it's just hard to get the measurements right sometimes still a lot left you could, you could do your whole face with this so but i'm just gonna do a little small spaces to show you this would probably work better if i waited for it to dry but i never really waited for it to dry in the past so be careful because the makeup brush will get the flour and water stuck to it if you do it when it's wet it dries decently fast maybe it's usually dry by the end of me filming so maybe like 10-15 minutes but you want to take it and drop it in these like kind of burnt colors so this is kind of dirty browns and reds is really what you want to dip it in and just kind of throw it on everywhere but it will stick to the brush so make sure it's not a gray brush and make sure you kind of blend it out to outside of the burn marks i guess and just do that. Use browns. Use some black in there as well. Also, you want to make sure all of it is kind of covered with something so that it doesn't look white and you can everything at least looks skin tone this is already starting to dry i can kind of feel it just a little bit kind of firmer up here than it was on my cheek 
from there you're also just going to want to put just little marks around random places because no one is just comes out clean with two burnt marks like you want to kind of throw around a couple different just little red spots i mean my brush is kind of gross <laughs> from it so definitely this will definitely wash out and that's it i think this looks okay it's pretty good i mean for flower water and eyeshadow a lot of people don't really know that it's that simple but that's it it's done so thank you for watching. That's all the tips and tricks I have. I'll probably think of some later and wish I would have put them in the video. I'm doing a giveaway soon on Instagram. So make sure you're following me on that. That's very important. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.